nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Summit hosted by the U.S. Super Yacht Association. Thank you guys so much for joining us. You know, you never realize doing an event in person is challenging enough, but then when you try and hybridize and have the online and connection with the local, it just makes it even more challenging. So we're super excited to have a sold out crowd here at the beautiful Ben Hotel and over 70 people with us online as well. And so, and we have a number of members everywhere around the world. So it's, it's the summit is a reimagined this year so that we have the ability to get people together in a safe and environmentally friendly way. And there's going to be a series this year. So you just stay tuned. There'll be more of these types of programs throughout the year. And it, a lot of them will be virtual. So you can tune in from anywhere. So thank you. You guys enjoying today already? So for the people that are online... You didn't get to enjoy this beautiful lunch today in the beautiful Ben Hotel, so I encourage you that are here to explore the hotel and go enjoy the patio and all the amenities here. It's a beautiful spot, and they did a beautiful job with lunch today. And as I said, we're blessed to have so many of you all here today because it has been a crazy year. And, and I mean, a, a year ago, the world stopped, and we just s disappeared from each other's lives. So to have all these smiling faces old friends, new friends, and associates that I haven't seen in nearly a year. It's a true blessing to have you all here, and thanks for coming out. So to paraphrase my, one of my favorite people, Carol Burnett, we're so glad to have this time together. So thank you guys for coming out. And it's nice to have a reason to get dressed up, leave your house, wear some heels, <laughs> put on some makeup. So it's, uh, it's so much fun. Sorry, guys, you know, put on a jacket, so it's a good thing. Uh, so before we get started, if everybody could do me a favor, since we are really working in a social world, um, if you could check in on your social media. Normally we say put your cell phones away, but if you could check on on your social media feeds and, you know, hashtag U.S. Super Yacht, US Super Yacht. And then also if you're not following USSA, please we encourage you to follow us on all of our our different feeds, whether it's Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, et cetera, et cetera, because we do put a lot of very interesting information through social so we can uh, reach our message across the world. And so, of course, you know, we love big boats, and we cannot lie. And so for our online people, we're going to encourage you to have the best experience possible because sometimes technology can be a challenge, as we've seen already today. And we would encourage you to change your settings to speaker view. And then stay tuned for updates in the chat box on the side. And if you have any questions and updates, all of that information will be populated there. So all of our online people, if you can do that, that would be great. So as our regular tradition at the US Super Yacht Association, because we do represent the United States of America, we start every gathering with the Pledge of Allegiance. And if you would, Join me in welcoming our USSA past chair, Rick Gladich. And if I could ask you all to stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much, Rick. 
And we're so, we're so blessed to have so many wonderful people here, but there's a few that without them, we wouldn't be having this event. And of course, our fantastic panelists uh, that, were, that have joined us today, Carl Allen and his wife, Gigi, aboard the Motor Yacht Gigi, thank you. Bobby Genovese from Motor Yacht BG Charade. Brian Schmidt from Motor Yacht H2. John Stalupi from Motor Yacht Quantum of Solace and, and so many others. And I don't want to tell you how many years ago I actually worked for Mr. Salupi on two of his, some of the world's fastest yachts, Octopussy and Thunderball, so you can do the math, so it was a long time ago. And uh, Mr. Salupi also has a couple of boats in the show, so I'm sure uh, he'll be there as well. But I'd like to introduce some of our VIPs that are here. Uh, Lisa Freeman, the executive director of the MIA Palm Beach, the owners of the MIA Palm Beach Boat Show and their incoming president, Austin Burkett, from E.J. Schrader Mattress Company. It's gonna be a great show, it looks beautiful. I know from here you can see a beautiful show. And I just wanna applaud the MIA Palm Beach, the Marine Industries of South Florida, and of course Informa, for really going the extra distance to make this event happen and give us the opportunity to get together and do it safely and get back to business. So thank you all so very much. In addition, I'd like to introduce a dear friend for many years who's retiring this year after 30 years, the marina manager at the fantastic Palm Harbor Marina, El Jefe, marina manager, John Smundin, a dear friend. So uh, we wish you many, many uh, exciting adventures ahead. And in our world, partnerships are everything. So if you could please also welcome the president of the International Super Yacht Society, Glenn Allen and who's also representing the director of Fort Pierce, which by the way, if you haven't heard, and I don't know, you must be living under a rock, if you haven't heard, their, their, their giant lift, the largest in the world, 1,500 ton, is up and just gonna be running soon. So what a great addition to what the United States has to offer the industry in terms of service repair and refit. So thank you so much for joining us, Glenn. In addition, I have Captain Sandy Yawn, who flew all the way from Denver to come join us today. It's nice to have you, Captain Yawn. And Monique Weber, the Pacific Yacht Management, is the chair of the Super Yacht Northwest, because again, it's all about partnerships. She's also one of our sponsors and a volunteer. You met her outside. Thank you so much, Monique. And in addition to being live, online, et cetera, we're also streaming live on superyachtradio.com on the radio side. So they aren't going to get the visuals, but they're going to at least be able to hear it. And so if you guys say a big hi to Maeve and Dave Dempsey and superyachtradio.com. Last year, at the start of COVID, we started a weekly radio show on Super Yacht Radio, and it's been a fantastic way for us to keep the U.S. message blow growing around the United States. So we thank Dave and Maeve for all their support throughout this past year. And of course, we have a volunteer board of directors that work tirelessly all year round that we couldn't do it without them. Our executive board is uh, chaired by Kate Pearson from Safe Harbor Marinas, Vice Chair Diane Byrne from Mega Yacht News, Past Chair Rick Gladich, Mid-American Marine Con Contracting, and our advocacy co-chairs, Jay Dayton, Clive McCartney, our marketing co-chairs is Bert Fowles and Julie Perry. Our membership co-chairs, which is not an easy thing in this environment, is Zach Savage and Rick Thomas. And of course, our treasurer is John Fitzgerald and our governance is Bob Allen. And we have a number of regional board members as well that are up on the screen here that you can see that, that work tirelessly in each region because we as an association are not just based here in South Florida. We work all over the country to make it accessible and be able to address the needs of the United States. And we have a number of also at-large board members that also represent different sectors. And we try to spread it around so that we have a, a voice at every sector of the industry. And of course, I would be remiss if I didn't represent our management team that worked super hard. And even during COVID, we've been actually working harder, as it, it might seem like crazy. Uh, of course, Julie Sack and Teresa Drugitz, who's been helping us out nonstop. My name is Kitty McGowan. I'm honored to be the president of the U.S. Super Yacht Association. And uh, without our fantastic sponsors, we wouldn't be here today. And we're gonna be seeing more of them as we go through throughout the year, I mean, throughout the show. 
and our platinum, but I have to represent our, our largest ones. Platinum sponsors, the Burger Boat Company, who's responsible for those fantastic swag bags. Um, unfortunately, Jim Ruffalo's flight got changed and he was unable to be here in person. He sends his regrets and says, thank you all so much for your support. And then we'll be hearing later from Wide Effect Talent Solutions um, as, our, as we get to the break. Of course, our gold sponsors are Marine Group Boatworks, and I know that Todd Roberts and Leah Yam are tuning in live from uh, San Diego. RPM Diesel, Bill Deary, and Peter Berkeley are here. Thank you so much. And of course, the Team Yachtco, official MLS of yachting in Stephen Myers, and they are also the power platform for the U.S. Super Yacht Association website. Um, and our silver sponsors, you can see, um, and thank you, Steve Ryder, for those great portfolios that are in the bags. And our bronze sponsors are just so numerous, we would spend an hour just talking about it. But the support from all of the sponsors has been absolutely overwhelming. So let's give all of our sponsors a big round of applause. Unfortunately, Kate, because uh, if you're paying attention to the news, San Diego is um, on shutdown. So our, our esteemed chairman, Kate Pearson from Safe Harbor Marinas, was unable to join us in person. Um, but we have a, a greeting for her that she'd like to share. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the 8th Annual Super Yacht Summit. My name's Kate Pearson with Safe Harbor Marinas, and I'm proud to be the chair of the U.S. Super Yacht Association. I'd love to thank everybody for coming today, both in person and like me, virtually. It's going to be a terrific event and I wanna thank everyone who's helped put this together, as well as our sponsors who help make it happen. Enjoy the day and I look forward to seeing you all in the not too near future. Thank you so much, Kate. We look forward to seeing you very soon. So, we never get an opportunity these days to have a gathering, and I don't think a lot of you guys actually know what we've been doing for the past year, because we've been in the COVID coma, and we're all kind of emerging like butterflies out of the cocoon. And so I'm going to try and give you the fastest two minutes in sports and give you an update on what your association has been doing for the past year. Our mission, as, as we started, is to promote and support the U.S. super yacht industry and its members worldwide through advocacy, marketing, and education. And what a whirlwind year this has been to try and accomplish any of those things. I mean, like we said, a year ago, everything was canceled. We thought, I don't know about you, but I thought it was gonna be a couple of months, we would be inconvenienced, maybe a few weeks. And who would have thought a year later we're still, still fighting those details? This worldwide pandemic has forever changed the way people do business, the way they interact, the way they communicate, and as we said, I was like, I'll be looking forward to getting rid of the mask soon, I hope. I know we've lost many loved ones and in our industry and our families and our hearts go out to all of you that may have lost someone. There's a couple of icons in our industry that I'm very sad to have lost this past year, including Bob Rossioli from the Rossioli Yachting Center. God knows they broke the mold when they made that one. And Joseph Zeno from Zeno Mattress Company, and I know so many more. They'll never be forgotten, and we appreciate all of their efforts in pioneering our industry. And so living up to our mission statement has clearly been a tough job. I mean, words like mask up, socially distance, cancel culture, essential business, border closures, distance learning. And meanwhile, we couldn't do shows and public gatherings, so how do we communicate? So we've continued to work hard and behind the scenes and pivot and work nationwide to keep our industry essential and our people on the job. We've persevered through a hotly contested presidential election. We've pivoted our efforts to communicate virtually online. Uh, luckily, our industry compared to many others has really prospered in many sectors. Some haven't been so lucky, but mostly our industry has been pretty happy in that what better way is there to socially distance than on your yacht? I don't know about you, but it would be a good thing. And many of you, and I know in our industry, have had the best years of your career, and others have struggled. We're going to hear from our panelists here shortly to see directly from the owner's mouth like how the COVID experience has not changed them and, and how it affected them, their families, and their use of their yacht. Because without you guys, none of us would have a job. So we appreciate all of your efforts and support. And 
the thing that we have found throughout the years is that industry and owners working together, there's nothing we can't do. A couple of years ago, we had the opportunity to work with Mr. Tillman Fertitta, and we were able to pass some major legislation to pass a U.S. flag registry for yachts over 500 gross tons. So I know with all of the, everybody working together, we can make it happen. This is our 15th year in as an association, and we became an association in direct response to a lack of a unified voice in the United States. So you can imagine my first year walking into DC saying, yes, I'm here representing the US Super Yacht Association. You say that. <laughs> They're like, uh, no. So what we've spent uh, the last 15 years doing is really working to educate legislatures about the economic impact, the number of jobs, and all the people that our industry supports, and it's not just a party. It's not just a rich man's game. It's about supporting families and jobs and industries. We've met with partner organizations weekly. We've kept all the industry on the same page. We've joined national coalitions to protect small business. We even helped sign on some legislation to make sure that the changes to the tax laws on the PPP would not impact those people that took those funds. And luckily, we were able to get it done at the last minute, right before the end of the year. And so none of us that took the PPP or got hit with a 36% surtax. We worked to ensure yacht crew include, were included in travel exceptions, allowing for crew transfers to work pretty well. We worked with the State Department in assisting to try and get visas ha you know, happening, and even helped return some crew that were erroneous, erroneously deported. We've been working to educate the CBP about the different types of visas and try and keep them on the same page, and have continued to provide captains with current cruising information during COVID because some days the cer certain state would be closed, the next day it wasn't. For those of you that have traveled this year, and I know like the Bahamas, I know Joe Dargavage is here. One day it's open, one day it's closed. That happened here in the States. And currently we're working uh, as a national coalition to be able to secure access to the Canadian waters to travel to Alaska and the Great Lakes. So, I mean, because right now the border's closed, so we're working very hard to help make that happen. Our annual trek to the American Boating Congress in DC is now virtual, um, and we expect, hopefully, that you'll all join us on April 21st and 22nd. And this is the time we would normally be walking the halls of Congress with our message about jobs, economic impact, and what we bring to our economy in the United States. Um, and so there'll be more information about how to join in the conversation coming up soon. But there's also, if you have an interest in seeing it firsthand, our last trek when we were there in person, there is a documentary that uh, Lee Savage from Between Two Yetis filmed. He spent a, a four days with us in DC, like marching through the halls in uh, Washington. And uh, it's available on superyacht.com website, of course, powered by Yacco. And this will allow us to continue to spread our message. As part of our pledge to provide the utmost in ROI for our members, we've launched a number of initiatives that have the ability to directly impact members' bottom line. A couple of years ago, we started a partnership with T. Spencer Samuels to bring 401k benefits, disability, short-term and long-term, because in our industry, if you've tried to get disability with our code things, it's very, very challenging. And I'm super excited. We've been working on this for two years. We've just launched, we just got approved last week, a healthcare program that is available to, for, I mean, to 1099 employees and companies as small as two employees. So we can bring you open coverage and an, op an opportunity to really do business and provide additional benefits to your employees. Because I don't know about you, try and find somebody to come to work these days. So now it's even more important to have additional opportunities for your employees. And so uh, Kelly and... Uh, <laughs> Lisa are in the back, and there's some brochures here with some information about that. Um, they've been proud partners with us, and they can answer questions for you anytime that the, throughout the day. Uh, we're also doing educational. We've done educational webinars. Last year, we did 14 on every topic imaginable. Uh, we've also rolled out. This is a very exciting program, especially to anybody in shipyards, marinas, we rolled out an exclusive partnership with Nova Southeastern University to provide complimentary training, OSHA training to any of your employees, all, one, all, whatever. If you're a member of U.S. Super Yacht Association, you can do anything from HAZWOPER, ha hazardous training, 
COVID and brand new OSHA 10 Maritime. It was only available previously in person here in South Florida. I'm very excited. And those of you tuning online, just give us a call on March 29th and 30th. This will be the first one available online. So you can get that as a member, complimentary. And that's just adding ROI to your membership. I know everyone's struggling with Zoom fatigue, and, but it's been the message for us all, unfortunately. Um, and, 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 but this is why today is so exciting for me. Um, as I said earlier, our Super Yacht Radio uh, weekly show has given us a spotlight. We st we're going to start some weekly live Facebook opportunities to promote our members. And of course, with Lee Savage behind the camera, we always have a good message. Our committees are working on social media campaign to promote the refit industry in the United States. And we're keeping everybody updated on national and international issues, including travel bans as countries open and close. The captains in the room, we're going to be holding, because normally we used to do a captain's briefing live, but we're going to hold a captain's briefing virtually very soon with all the updates on travels, visas, how to get visas, how to train your crew so that they don't get stopped at the, at the border and they don't get sent back. So stay tuned for that. We'll have lots more information coming. So as the pandemic starts to wane, the USSA, will, we will continue to trim our sales and continue to work and advocate and promote, market, and educate our members of the industry and all of you. So let us hear from you. If you're not a member, you know, it would be great to have you. But, and we're blessed to have some fantastic owners who represent the best of our industry, who will be right by our side along the way. So we have to take a quick commercial break because without our sponsors, so I have a quick second so you can have a sip of water. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, Mark Gadboys, Vice President of Wide Effect Talent Solutions. And then we'll have a short video break and then we're coming back to the panel. Thank you so much for indulging me for a couple of minutes. I know it was more than two minutes, but there's a lot going on. So when someone says to you, There's just, they're not doing anything, we've been working harder than ever. So thank you all so much. Here's Mark Gadboys. Hello. All right, there it is. My name is Mark Gadboys. I'm with Wide Effect Talent Solutions. Uh, Julie made it very clear that I have 120 seconds or so to do this, so I'll go as quick as I can. I, uh, I hate public speaking, so we'll do this as quick as I can. Um, been a member of US Super Yacht for 10 years now. Um, it's crazy to think 10 years ago today, I was in my last week working as crew on a Super Yacht. Um, I hung up my chamois and started uh, working in the business world. And the first uh, recommendation to me was to become a member of the U.S. Super Yacht Association. And I'll tell you, being part of this group was an integral part of the growth of my career. It really took me to the next level, got to meet some amazing people, grow some amazing relationships. And uh, thanks to people like Kitty, uh, Mark Welch, Lee Savage, you know, just to name a few, um, has really helped grow my career and build relationships that have gone a long way. Uh, so thank you uh, to anybody that's a member, anybody that's involved. And if you're not a member, I highly recommend it. Now is the time to sign up. Um, I've recently changed companies. Um, I'm now with Wide Effect Talent Solutions. Uh, we connect talent with opportunity. We're an executive head headhunting company. Um, been with the company for about six months now, but the first thing I did when I joined the company was join the U.S. Super Yacht Association, and the first in-person event we had the ability to sponsor, we stepped up and did the platinum sponsorship because we truly know there's an ROI in being involved in this group. So I just want to thank everybody for coming today. Hope you enjoy the, uh, the, the event, and uh, hopefully I'll chat with all of you at some point throughout the week. Enjoy the boat show. Thank you very much. At Wide Effect Talent Solutions, we specialize in matching maritime professionals with shipyards and marine contractors. With over 60 years of staffing experience, we have developed a proprietary system that places the right people in the right positions quickly. We work with our clients as an extension of their HR department to identify and vet the right candidates. Our goal is to match the right talent with each unique opportunity, positioning everyone for long-term success. Elite level staffing solutions include placements ranging from executive leadership to yacht carpenters and shipfitters. 
Do you need to find the ideal candidate for a permanent position? Are you looking to assess a potential hire to fit within your organization? Contact Wide Effect today at 1-833-493-5627 and check us out on the web at wideeffect.com. Hello everyone, Jim Ruffalo with Burger Boat Company. Glad to see that everybody came to the summit. I hear that it was great. Unfortunately, I couldn't be there, but we were certainly proud to sponsor it, be a co-sponsor of the summit and love being part of USSA. We want to thank you all for attending and appreciate your membership. Wow, you can see with the power of sponsorship. We love these guys. Thank you all. Let's give it a big round of applause to all of our sponsors. Honestly, we couldn't do this without you. And uh, we really appreciate all your effort and impact and everything. And so I know the part that we've all been waiting for with Beta Breath uh, is the, the panel. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce our vice chair and chairman of the Cypriot Summit, so in one organization, we don't just have one redhead, we have two crazy redheads. So you can imagine what happens here. So please join me in welcoming Diane Byrne from Mega Yacht News. She's going to introduce our panel. Thank you, Katie. Is that on? There we go. Yeah, two crazy redheads is right. 
So welcome everyone. Thank you all for being here in person and thank you all of you who are joining us in TV land and on radio land. Um, I would very much like to introduce you to our moderator and our wonderful panelists today. We have Michael Reardon of, I want to make sure I get this right, Yacht Cons Reardon Yacht Consulting. I always say it backwards, my apologies. And our panelists, we have Carl and Gigi Allen from the Motor Yacht Gigi. We have Bobby Genovese from the Motor Yacht BG Charade. We have Brian Schmidt from the Motor Yacht H2. And last but not least, we have John Stalupi from the Motor Yacht Quantum of Solace. Each one has a very different experience over the past year. So we are very much looking forward to having them share their insight into what has gone on, as well as how we can continue to help them as an industry. So gentlemen, please come up. Okay. All right, guys. So I got to say thank you. You know, we got to talk for just a few minutes uh, before we had lunch and came up here. And uh, this is really awesome. You know, um, I'm by far the youngest person on this panel, I know. Never. And you, I'm kidding. Uh, and, 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 you guys, <laughs> and you guys have just been people that I've looked at as someone, as a businessman, providing services here and uh, seeing what you guys have done. And a few of, us, few of us have actually gotten to work together a little bit. So uh, we're really excited and thank you for your time. So, hey, with, uh, so we're gonna start with just asking some questions. And uh, the first one has, to, of course, to do with COVID and the way it's changed the world. And we'll just kind of do a round robin and people can talk as they wish and I'll try to keep it uh, in a reasonable time frame. And then at the very end, uh, there'll be a few questions that we're gonna entertain. And at the very end, we'll open it up for you guys to ask some questions if you want. I will tell you, I will be the gatekeeper. So if it's anything weird or uh, inappropriate, I'll just shut that one down. But uh, we really wanna, uh, we're so thankful that you guys are here and want to uh, ask questions and uh, get your thoughts. So, um, so the first question has to do with, and I'm going to give this as a background. We've just heard about the way different people and different countries and have reacted to COVID. So I don't, I don't know if anyone's a baseball fan here. Bob Saxon's not with us today. But uh, if you're a baseball fan, the baseball season opened up, and you have, on the one hand, the Toronto Blue Jays, or wherever Toronto play, or whoever the team is in Toronto, that can't play in Canada because Canada's close. On the other hand, the Texas Rangers opened up with a sold out stadium, no social distancing and no masks. So there's sort of the dichotomy of, and I know people are snickering about Texas, but there's a lot of good Texans here too. So with that, as we, as we, as we look at, so Bobby, and we'll come down, how's COVID affected your life and yachting and what's happened since this happened for you? Well, I'm, uh, I, I'm one of those guys that didn't get to yacht. Um, I had a great brainstorm of touring Phuket, Thailand last year, which we did. We did three, almost four months. It was fabulous. And then having left the boat there, I came back for Christmas, um, thinking that we would go back and uh, head to New Zealand for the America's Cup in Australia, et cetera. And then, of course, COVID hit, and it especially hit Thailand hard, where, like Canada, the borders have been closed. So unfortunately, uh, my crew, my boat, have now been stuck in Thailand for almost 14, going wow. on 15 months. Wow. Um, with the crew not being able to leave, because then they can't come back in. Yeah. And it's been, it's been difficult. So I, I how, lost a year. How many crew? Uh, there's 11 on the boat. Yeah. And so all 11 went? And uh, three went and the other eight stayed. Wow. Okay. So uh, just a little bit of our history. I managed Charade for uh, 13 years. And well. And, the, and, and, well. Then, and, then, and then Bobby uh, actually bought it from uh, uh, someone in between and then have done just an unbelievable job with it. And tell us, so you've done a couple of big refits, right? 
The first refit, as everybody knows in the brokerage business, you start at this number and you end up at that number. <laughs> and while the boat was in uh, Thailand, I thought, well, look, if there was ever an opportunity to take advantage of the dollar, um, just basically said whatever we do to make the boat look brand new, or just make it a new boat, do it. So uh, they've done a great job. I, yet to see it, but um, <laughs> it's currently being shipped back, hopefully, through one of our representatives in the room today, uh, shipped back. Uh, it'll be here back in Florida in May. All right, all right. Carl, how about you? Uh, we've been, I can't complain. I mean, it's been uh, nine months of, out of walkers. The biggest challenge for us is getting crew members back and forth. And will so, you just, for the audience sake, tell them a little bit about your program? Oh, yeah. So uh, there's a little island about 100 miles east of here <laughs> called Walker's Cay, if anybody's familiar with that. Uh, my wife and I bought it in 2018 uh, with this grand vision of what we were going to do. And then uh, Dorian hit. And then Dorian was like a speed bump compared to what's happened since then. So uh, we're about to finish the marina. It's almost open. Uh, first tournament in May, marlin fishing. And uh, probably a grand opening probably next spring. Sometime. Yeah. But, you know, the COVID definitely not only affected people, but now it's supplies, getting concrete and windows and light bulbs and everything else. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, supply chain, yeah. big time. Way, big time. way off right now. Yeah, okay, very good. Yeah. Brian. So Mike, uh, we've been building a boat throughout this yeah. craziness. And uh, in Wanchies, North Carolina, if any of you know where that is. So thank God the governor for an essential business, uh, being in the boat building business, because there's a lot of boat builders in that neighborhood. So we were able to keep working. Um, but the supply chain, just like uh, uh, Mr. Allen here, was disrupted. Um, things that would be on the shelf for four to six months, uh, things that we had ordered uh, from other countries especially were, were, were three, four, five, six months late. So, yeah, you and I had talked about your engines yeah. just being six months Engines, because, stuff, yeah. uh, all the coming the from Germany, deck gear from uh, New Zealand, uh, from, right? All that stuff was just highly delayed. affected, huh? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So tell us a little bit, real quickly, about the project, though, because it's really interesting. Yeah. So uh, decided to build a, my own boat. Um, we're making payroll every week. Um, <laughs> at least the empty building, um, uh, Buddy Davis's old building that that. Uh, Ultimately, the next tenant was uh, w was the gunboat, and uh, they they didn't, went bankrupt in that building. So I'm um, I guess so. Hopefully, we won't do the same. Follow, <laughs> follow suit there. Uh, so we're building a 110 foot uh, power cat, aluminum power cat in there. There was just an article in. Uh, in Power and Motor Yacht this month, so you can read about it. Yeah, and so it's a 110-foot catamaran, but it has a 35-foot beam. And, right. and John, I think your boat's, how, how long's your boat? In, uh, 234. And do you know what the beam is? 40 feet. 40 feet, so it's a 100-foot boat with almost the same beam as a 240-foot boat. So huge platform, and uh, what, are you, what are you gonna stock in toys? Oh, it's, it's got the full, the full array, it's got a, a helicopter, a submarine, a 26-foot uh, tender, and a 17-foot tender, and a and a car. <laughs> <laughs> and awesome! <I'm> <laughs> awesome! Thanks, John. Tell us about your adventures. Well, my captains, um, we were in a retrofit, and uh, my crew went on lockdown. I mean, we did a full lockdown. Uh, no one, thank God, got COVID or got sick. Um, compared to some of my other businesses, is, which is the auto business, and we would lose 25, 30 people at a time. And we were shutting down and we sanitizing. And I, I have to be, tell you that the COVID was an interesting thing because we had some charters and I didn't take the charters. My wife says, hey, we're going to go on a boat down lockdown ourselves. What are we going to charter for? So we never chartered it. And uh, we kept all the crew together. All my crew was intact. We do have rotating captains, and we have about 16 crew on the boat. And no one had got COVID until this day, but we made sure that they didn't go out. They weren't allowed to mingle with other boats. They weren't allowed to mingle with going into bars and clubs. And, um, you know, it was difficult on the crew. 
And I, you know, I feel bad for the crew because we would show up on the boat and the crew was like, can we please, it was like having a dog in a cage, can we please get out of the cage? <laughs> and I said, oh, look, we gotta be safe. And naturally that was before we were vaccinated. So uh, you know, I was trying to be excited to get vaccinated so I wouldn't have to be brain damaged and worry about all this so much. Yeah, yeah, very good. So, you know, I, I meant to ask the first question about COVID with uh, this, uh, at, my, at my home, my daughter, when we sit down for dinner, she comes up and she's bubbly and full of energy. Isabel is her name. And my son, Matthew, who's older but disabled, calls her our tornado. So you can imagine. She comes in the room and whoo, but she likes to do this thing of what was your high, your low, and your warm and fuzzy. So... You know, so we kind of talked about the effects and probably a lot of the lows, but were there any highs and warm and fuzzies in there? Well, I mean, the high was, was obviously uh, touring the James Bond Islands and P Phuket and meeting the people and the food and mm. checking out all of the different resorts was amazing. And as I said, the down part was thinking I would be coming back three, four months later only to have a a year and three months, four months later. So that's that was definitely not warm and fuzzy. Yeah, yeah. For you, Carl? Yeah. Um, I think not being able to get the family there, you know, that was definitely challenging. Uh, we didn't see our kids for a while, grandkids. Um, but the upside was nobody's fishing over there, so the fishing's been phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, the fish so, have been having fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean... <laughs> And then uh, we found a few gold coins and silver coins. That was pretty. pretty oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so tell us about that. Uh, we got a permit from the government a few uh, months ago, and we're the first company to get one in over 35 years. And there's a lot of shipwrecks, a lot of Spanish galleons that we're looking for, one called the Maravilla. And we think that we're on the trail from, you know, the old Bob, Bob Marks days and, and uh, Herbo Humphreys. Wow. And we've been following that and uh, had a great conversation about the, the tiger sharks that we see out there. Uh, right. But yeah, it's been tremendous being able to. So do you pull a tow to ray behind the support vessel? And oh, we've got a whole team of blow boats and, you know, the mailbox boats that come out there because everything's under sand. Okay. And we were digging and, okay. and uh, you know, you get under there and then it's all flat. And okay. It's, it's not, neat. it's not high tech. It's, uh, it's not really. No, you're, okay. you got hand metal detectors and you're digging, you know, it's, yeah. it's really not. It's, uh, yeah. it's uh, pretty fun though. Thing. And so the, the coins, doubloons, or? Uh, a few gold coins, but mostly silver. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, lots of neat stuff like uh, olive jars and swords. And I found a 16th century, 16th century enema kit, which was interesting. Uh, <laughs> Don't use it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> interesting. yeah. So, I mean, you coming over from Europe, you run out of roughage, you know. Like, you know. <laughs> uh, Awesome. Uh, How about you, Brian? What, uh, any the, the, silver linings? Oh, the high is no, nobody got sick. Uh, um, nobody died. Uh, that I can't, it can't get any better than that. Yeah. One of the big benefits, though, was coming to this event, and being able to sit with these guys <laughs> over lunch and listen to some great stories. Well, yeah. That's, that's been well, hey, you know, I don't want to because I didn't know we we've uh, been managing a few boats from. This it built in this area, the super high-end custom sport fish world. If you don't know it, you don't know that part of the world. But this is a huge uh, traditional maritime center in the United States. I started my boat building up in Maine, which has an awesome tradition. But the North Carolina boat builders are really incredible. So the, the team, how, how, what's the size of the group building the boat now? Uh, right now, it's... 14, but we built most of the boat with four guys. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Now, also, just so everyone knows, you know, most owners want to come and jump into a shipyard, and besides negotiating how much, how quickly can you get it for me? That really wasn't your profile. Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, you, you know, these guys could probably write a check for whatever they wanted to buy. I, I didn't have 10 million bucks sitting in the bank. So the longer it took, the more I could pay for it with cash flow. Mm -hmm. So that was probably a big part of the reason why I did it this way. Yeah. And how long has it been taking? Uh, we're, it'll be four years in November. Okay. We laid the keel. Right. So and was, and where, where are you at now? It's in paint right now. Right. Yeah. And delivery? 
the end of this year. <laughs> <laughs> Pray for him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Silver linings. Uh, silver lining is similar. Uh, nobody had got sick. Um, we enjoyed the boat a lot more. We got to, you know, use it more than we ever did. Even though we stood local, we stood around the United States. We, I never went. All my companies are in New York. We wind up in New York twice because of it. Right. Normally, you know, when I say just. We stood up there for the summer right. because we couldn't travel, couldn't go to Europe. Um, now we're excited, hoping that Europe opens up again so we could cruise around and, and get going again and move around. But, you know, we're in the Bahamas a lot, so it's pretty safe over there. Uh, you know, they do testing, the crew gets tested, and then a couple of days later you get tested again. Yeah. And um, so my silver line is enjoying the boat and yeah. getting Great. closer to the crew and Seeing who I like and dislike, but thank God I like the whole boat. <laughs> <laughs> and then I bought a second boat because, you know, one boat's not enough. Right, <laughs> right, right. So Never you enough. Need, you always need a second boat. Yeah. That way, in case you didn't like somebody, you'd say, you know, why don't you stay on that boat? Because, you know, we have to bring people on a boat three, four days, five days. You know, a week is a lot. Well, after that, you know. Take it easy. Don't let the door hit you on the yes on the way out. So, you know, you're trying to hope they leave sooner. But right. Like fish, <laughs> right? Fun. Yeah. So tell me, what's the other boat? Uh, I have a 118-foot Ocean Alexander. Oh, great. Yeah. What's Beautiful. it called? What's it's called Q. Q. Yeah, of I mean, course. You've got to have James Bond. Got to have James Bond in there. How many uh, James Bond named yachts have you owned? Probably about eight or nine. Okay. And uh, we were going to name the new boat. Uh, no time to die. And my wife says, "No, nope, you can't name it." No time to die. I said, "It says no time to die. I'm not dying." You know, but you know, similar. I'm a very impatient guy, and to have to wait three, four years for a new boat drives me a little on the crazy side. But, uh, <laughs> All right. Sometimes you got to do it. All right. So next question for you guys is U.S. builds, and I know you know. So you have a boat that was built in uh, Holland. Uh, uh, Carl, you have one boat. Well, you have a bunch of boats that were built in the U.S. and one that was built in Holland, too? Yes, we have one non-American boat, the Damon. Yeah. The support vessel, everything else, right down to the Hell's Bay is American. Yeah. And then, Brian, of course, you're very intentionally building in the United States. And, John, I guess being, you know, you've done every, all of that. Why don't we start with you? What are your thoughts on what's going on with this uh, American industry of yacht building? And why are we so good at doing refits, but seem to be losing the boat building capability. I think because of the waterfront, it's so expensive here. Mm. And, you know, to get a place to build a boat. I mean, we built our first American boat was built in uh, uh, Vancouver not oh. one, uh, with uh, Christensen. Okay. And, um, you know, to see how they get the boat in the water and out of water, at, in, in the water and out of the water was pretty crazy, but most of my boats were built in Europe, and I built a couple of boats here, but, you know, like a Donzi and a couple of sport fish boats that I built and fishing boats, stuff like that, but, um, you know, I, I would love to see our industry build more boats here for a lot of reasons. First of all, you start building a boat, and it's 25,000 euros, and then the euro goes up, and now it's, instead of being $30,000, it's $50,000, right. and, you know, you always hedge in your but, and I think we have the craftsmen here. I think we have the ability to do it. Um, it just seems like the people in Europe are a little bit more dedicated. But I believe the United States is starting to come around. Yeah. And when you say the people in Europe are more dedicated, I think it addresses, you know, there are generations of carpenters at Correct. the shipyards. And, and and but, you know, some of the shipyards, you know, similar like Westport and like uh, Christensen and some of the other shipyards that, that are here in the States, uh, their quality is really... Mm. Really spectacular. I've been on a few boats that I looked at. The quality was good. Again, you know, naturally, when you're used to building a European boat, and then some people feel like an American boat is not as good as a European boat. It's like, is a Mercedes better than a Chevrolet? Or, it, you know, it's like that old, you know, what's, why do we drive a foreign car and not an American car? So yeah. it, it, it sort of like crosses back and forth. Yeah. Okay. Brian, your thoughts? On what's that, Mike? On the on, on U.S. boat building, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. and and the situation that we have, we seem to. Well, you're a great example of finding a cadre of people with skill 
and building something really cool, but we can't seem to do that in a sustained way these days. Yeah, no, um, we looked around, and John's right, finding a place to build a boat is tough, it's expensive, real estate is hard to find, um, so that, that's a real obstacle, a real challenge, yeah. um, but uh, we're in an industrial park in a property that's owned by the state of North Carolina. Um, it was a, you know, a defunct boat building facility uh, without any equipment or anything, so um, I wouldn't build a boat I wouldn't buy a foreign car, John. I'd, I, I've never owned a foreign car. I buy a U.S. car. I'm gonna buy a, a U.S. built boat and U.S. built airplane, and that's just the way I'm built. Um, so I, I wouldn't consider anything other than that. You know, we are in a community of boat builders. Uh, Bayless is right across the street. Spencer's right around the corner. Um, you name it, there's there's a, a dozen of these guys around there. They've been building boats for 50 years. The craftsmanship is top-notch. The quality of the boats are fabulous. Uh, you know, there's no language barrier. There's no monetary barrier. Um, I can go see that boat. I don't have to get a COVID test to go look at my boat. Uh, uh, it has a lot of advantages, and and um, my boat's going to be done in the end of this year. So any of you guys want to build a boat, I got a great facility for you. <laughs> uh, for you. There's a couple guys in this room I know that could do it. <laughs> well, John, it's the only way I could do it. I I, I couldn't write a check like you can. So um, I, that's and you know. I, that's but the only I thing think, I can do. But address, instead of the financial part, though, it's just if, about the time frame. Yeah, yeah if yeah. you wanted a shorter time frame, uh, oh, you I could. Oh, I could have yeah. hired up. Well, that's the other part of this. Finding people has been yeah. tough. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, so, you know, the, the guy who's running the project, he thinks that a lot of these guys prefer staying home. They can make more money staying home than going to yeah, work. So that, I, I yeah. don't know. Yeah. 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 Problem. Yeah. Carl? Yeah. I mean, it's sad, I think, what's happened to, you know, a lot of the American builders. Uh, I'm a big fan of Westport. I'm, I'm probably going to look at their new 52. Um, I mean, so Gigi's a 50-meter Westport. Westport. What year? We're 2008. And did you buy it new? Actually, 2010. I bought it uh, five years old. Oh, okay, okay. But, uh, but, yeah, I mean, you look at the quality. Uh, my engine room is so clean. Parts are right around the corner. Uh, I mean... I really think it's it's sad what's happened to the American builders, but there's two guys at this table right here that didn't help that cause, <laughs> yeah. Mr. Convoy there. Uh, but uh, you know, if they were running right now, can you imagine? She said, "I'll be busy." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very good. Yeah. Any thoughts, Bobby? Well, I just don't have the experience. I, yeah. Uh, you know, I bought my Lazara. I love my Lazara, uh, but other than that. Um, yeah. If you, as you said earlier, I mean, you know, to get a refit, I wish the boat had it been here, where you could oversee it every day and uh, and watch it. But right. So in in this global economy, but in the in, in you know we're USSA and we're kind of looking at what can we do to help here. The question remains very open and I'd say unanswered and hopeful. But dot 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 you know for boat building. But on the other hand, refits. We seem to be able to knock it out of the park, and uh, and you know e even Bobby, you you chose to go to the uh, to Thailand for for you know cruising and all that stuff, and the circumstances just unfolded. But you've done refits in the U.S. out of the U.S. Do you you know and you do have do you well, have a well, preference do dollar amount? I mean, when you looked at the currency versus the Thai back, I mean, how do you how do you not do it? Right. And, uh, you know, my captain, who's been around forever, has reassured me over and over again that uh, the quality is there. So financially alone, um, you know, you had to make the choice to do it, and I did. Yeah. So just for uh, for my understanding, we're talking, I think now uh, the dollar's like 122 or something like that for euros? I think what, it was 119. 119? 119. What were you paying in, do you know what the exchange was favorably? I would say it was probably 60 cents on the dollar oh, over wow. there. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, Carl, I know, I, actually, I met with, I, I got to go on your... Um, uh, what is support vessel? Yeah, is it called Axis? Axis. 
an access boat over in Dania Cut when it was going through. I think you bought it and did a big refit over there. Yes. And so your experience in and oh, well, have you done pretty much all your refit stuff in the yeah, US? Yeah, we did the GG here uh, last year, and then Access went in for our uh, five year. Um, here's your man right here, Mr. Patrick. He <laughs> he did it all. Uh, but yeah, we bought it pretty much basic, and and turned it into you know, something pretty unique, and, and uh, I should have asked Damon for a royalty because their, their new one's looking awful like, like mine. <laughs> <laughs> and so you did, a, you did a great job, Patrick. So. And you good. over there. Very there very there it is. Yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and Brian, you, you know, you, uh, your boat's under construction, but you have another boat, and you've built, I mean, you're kind of U.S., 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 so you really, you, have you done anything outside the United States? No, I, I built a couple of boats. Um, one I have right now was built in uh, Urbana, Virginia, and uh, by the same guy who's building this boat, but he's working nice. for me now. Yeah, um, yeah. Not for himself. So that's so. been consistent. And yeah. for you, John, refits. Do you, do refits, you... uh, we just did a big refit up in Savannah, in yeah. the shipyard up in Savannah, because he's the only, our boat drafts a lot of water, and they could get us in and out of the water pretty easily, and they have a, a dry dock in there that could lift right. us. Right, right. So that's a big challenge where you're going to do it. And I recently just took over to Port of Palm Beach now where we're doing refits and stuff like that. And we could get up to a 500-foot boat in there. Right. And we have 40 feet of water. Right. So that's a big help to ourselves as far as to do refits and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. But, and, uh, and again, your boat's 200 and... 34 feet. 34 feet. And the new lift at Fort Pierce is going to be able to pick up about a 240 Foot bow. So Fort Pierce might be a thing uh, in the future. So that's that's it for uh, refits and, and building in the U.S. And now let's pivot to crew. So um, so it sounds like John, uh, uh, you you had to sort of navigate this tricky line of crew. I really need you to stay on the boat, but I want to take care of you, uh, and I need you to stay healthy so you don't get me sick. Um, how has it been figuring all that out? And, you know, it was unprecedented what we went through versus work where, of course, in a car dealership, people are exposed to so many other people. You kind of become, if it hits, a super spreader. So how, what's the... Well, they would have, like, parties for the crew all the time on the boat where they, you know, again, like I said, my captains did a really good job keeping the crew entertained and trying to keep them all in house, and they would find different things to occupy themselves with. And to do, and I would tell the captain here, get them and take the crew to dinner or do this or do something different, you know, right. try and find different things to do. Um, it's pretty pretty difficult when you tell people that are used to, like, walking up the docks, talking to everyone, you know, going out with their friends and, and going different places to say, hey, you're in lockdown. Right. And I mean, we were in lockdown. We had right. no choice. Yeah. But um, now I think it's a little different. Um, again, the crew is more into this. They understand it. Um, if a crew goes away and they come back, uh, we quarantine them, we get them checked. We right. want to make sure they're all good because, you know, we don't want to bring them on a boat. And then, you know, the crew, all the crew live in the small quarters. Yeah. It's not like they could go on the other side of the house or, right. you know, they're in the crew quarters. And they right. all got, they eat together, they drink together. Right. So it's pretty difficult to keep right. the crew safe. But I got to be honest, the, the captains did a, a great job and um, on both my boats. And so I have no complaints with that. But um uh, it's still a little tricky until everybody gets vaccinated. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the other thing that as things have loosened up, charter, not charter, your wife in the beginning said, no way, we're not. So we're, we're, My wife still don't want to charter. <laughs> okay. When we used to charter, we used to have a, a mattress that we chartered with, and then we'd have our own mattresses. Yeah. Because she, you know, you don't want nobody using your mattress. And yeah. Be my luck, I'll charter the boat, and the guy will get the runs during the night. And, <laughs> And I got to come and lay in that mattress. So it was easy to just buy an extra mattress. There you go. I've never thought of that with guests in my house. Dang we it. got new mattresses. Uh, so, so if you charter off me, you'll be yeah. clean mattress. There you go. There you go. Uh, I don't know. If, I don't even know how to move from that comment to the next. So, uh, Bobby, you had really a different situation where what, you know, uh, John had to sort of ask and or, you know, whatever an owner does with, hey, we got a situation here, but you were stuck. Uh, what, what happened with your crew and did they stay healthy? Um, 
Yeah, I mean, as I said, they were, I mean, Thailand was on complete lockdown. So they, they were there. And uh, as I said earlier, we just took advantage of the situation to, to do the refit. Right. Um, you know, a little bit what Brian said, getting parts in and out of Thailand was a little bit of a, a story in itself. But um, for all intents and purposes, it, it worked out well, except um, I didn't do the new mattress thing, but I'm now on <laughs> Very good. Be a surge in mattress orders. <laughs> yeah. And Carl, how about you? Keeping the keeping the gang healthy. I mean, as... we all together. We have like thirty people out there, right. and it was you know playing every reindeer game and you know parties and but people got bored. They got they got to want to go see their families, and I, I kept reminding them. I said, look, this is it doesn't get any better over there, you know. And uh, I think we managed pretty well. They're all pretty excited to get back there now. So yeah. And yeah. did you have any of the crew get sick? Did we? No. We did? Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. I think we maybe had one. Yeah. Yeah. We just yeah. got tested an hour ago, and I am negative. <laughs> <laughs> and then, Good Brian, point. with you, you know, uh, just to let the people, you know, so you're building a boat with huge volume, but you and I talk, but share with the audience. What, what's your plan in, in running that yes. as far as crew? I've never had crew. Uh, it scares the crap out of me to have them. Um, it's part of the reason, though, that I built the boat. Um, I knew I couldn't be crawling around the engine room and maintaining the boat. As I get older, I'm gonna need help. Right. So I built, I built the boat with the idea of the hope that I could get a husband and wife Anybody knows anybody? <laughs> Captain and, uh, and, and his wife, somebody who's good with, um, with equipment um, as well as running the boat. That would be my ideal scenario. Uh, I don't know if I can find that or not, but that's right. what I and, would. And then also share with us, though, what's the boat set up for as far as you, you, you told me the crew accommodations are awesome. But yeah. and, and how many crew could the boat handle? Five. There's two, two separate crew spaces. There's a separate crew galley, a separate crew lounge. I mean, we spent a lot of time and energy to create a nice crew space so that we could hopefully find somebody who wanted to live on the boat and felt right. like they could, you know, not be shoved into a closet somewhere. Right. Um, and I hope that that would be an inducement to find the right kind of people. Um, right. But I'm hoping to do it with two uh, longer passages, longer trips. We'd be able to up to five. Right. Okay. Yeah. So just with uh, in this conversation and knowing you're building a U.S. boat, everything you've shared about your feelings about the country, of course you're going to have a U.S. flag. But yes. Bobby, what flag is on, Sheree? Uh Marshall Island. Marshall Island. Carl, we'll just say Gigi. Uh, Montego Bay. Montego, Jamaica. Jamaica. Yeah. Jamaica. And John, what's uh, Quantum? Uh, Quantum is uh, Cayman, Cayman, and um, Q is American flag. Q is American. So with that, the next question, uh, American crew, foreign crew, the mix, what, what, what do you like? What works for you? And, and well, I, I'm the opposite of Brian. I can't have enough crew. I mean, I'm telling you. <laughs> I mean, I could do without the headaches, but... Um, you know, I, I do have a couple of American crew, but I, I like the international flavor. I, I like the vibe of, uh, of, uh, of, of people from different countries. And then when you go to that country, they usually have places to go or take us or relatives to meet. Um, I, I really integrate the whole thing. I, I genuinely love people. And I, I can't learn enough about people as these gentlemen will tell you over lunch it was like the fifth degree of questioning but uh, I love it I love it all right Jeez. um I don't know we we've got about half and half I think and uh half U.S. half international yeah okay yeah and it's it's good I mean we pull up to a port and it's like here's the United Nations right I mean there's 15 nationalities I think and uh the biggest complaint I get is the Americans have to pay taxes and the other ones don't. I'm like, look, you're talking to the wrong dude about paying taxes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's, that's a pain. But, uh, yes. And then South Africa, you know, I love South Africa. It's one of my favorite places. And, but the crew members, I mean, they bob and weave and dodge all over the world, these people. Right? I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. And it's just, you know, that's the challenge. Right. Uh, Canadians are all right to deal with. 
you know. Uh, so, so just on that one comment, and, and it's not, but it, you know, when you say, Bob, they just come and go quickly, is your experience with, with South African group? Oh, no, no, it's Bob just, weave, like I mean, they, no, I didn't mean like that. Time. I meant that they, they have to get, you know, they can't be somewhere for so long. Oh, I just right. had to send our... With our, visas and stuff. You know, our first mate had to go to Costa Rica, or no, they went to Panama. Right. And they're now... Right. Uh, I said citizens of Panama. Yeah. And so... Yeah. But they don't well, pay taxes, which I'm figuring out. I, I don't, I'm thinking I might do that. I'm thinking about <laughs> just becoming like so, a, a so citizen of the world crew, and yeah. just keep <laughs> moving and never stop. Well, as icons <laughs> of industry, you got, you know, it is. So for all the people in the room that are familiar with people working on yachts, me as a former captain on a Cayman flag yacht, um, yeah, the game was to try to not pay taxes. But there is something that's kind of... I don't know, naive, or it's like everybody pays taxes somewhere, you know? And, uh, but it is an expectation. And when you have one group of people paying taxes and the other not, yeah, it probably does create some interesting stuff. How about you, John? Well, we get a mixture of crew. Um, you know, naturally, American crew has to pay taxes unless they form their own company and then we'll 1099 them. So at least that way it wouldn't be. It, it falls on their shoulders, not on my shoulder. Right. But there's a lot of benefits to having American crew on American payroll. They get all our benefits. They get everything. Not that the foreigns don't. The other thing is I don't have to worry about shipping them out and shipping them back again. You know, they're here all the time. Uh, the only thing I do find is that foreign crew like living on the boat. American crew want to go home at night. Mm -hmm. So that becomes a little problem. But mm -hmm. I won't leave a boat alone, so there's always got to be someone... Right. On the boat, especially the big boat. The big right. boat, we have at least four people on all the time. Right. You know, no matter what happens. And, right. you know, you, listen, a boat is more money than people's homes. Most people's boats cost more money than their homes. And, you know, it's, it's, it's something that has to be cherished because if a pipe breaks during the night and it's a seawater pipe, you're not going to run out of water. At least if you're on a small boat that you're running off, you know, your water tank, Right. You run out of water. There's just so much water. But you know, it's, to me, it's important to have the crew on a boat all yeah. the time. Yeah, yeah. Understood. Understood. I have a, I have a client where uh, I had to go down to Buenos Aires for uh, talking about a huge refit. And he made it a really important point. Michael, you got to understand, the yacht's really, really special to me. I don't live the way, I don't live at home the way I do on the yacht. I don't have any, you know, he had one or two staff in his property. Um, the number of people, it is a, it is a uh, for most people, Brian, you're going to try to avoid that, but a pretty big paradigm shift with the number of people around you. And I know, Bobby, uh, before Charade, you, you had owned a few yachts and... and no, right? I mean, most of my boats were smaller. The first okay. boat I fell in love with was, was, okay. was the Lozara. Okay, so having crew around you and that, that, just what I've explained, what's your take on it and how was it for you? I mean, I, you know, again, I have been very fortunate, um, but I, I just can't have enough staff, whether it's at home or on the boat. I just like things perfect. Okay. And it takes an army to make it perfect. Right. And, uh, you know, it doesn't bother me at all. I mean, again... Yeah. They, they all have personalities. They all have love and hate relationships with whoever they're with or they're dating or whatever. But for the most part, um, you know, I, 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 I like that five-star service yeah. everywhere. And Carl, how about for you and Gigi? I, have you kind of evolved into smaller boats, less crew, then more and more and more? Uh, so we seem to be collecting crew members nowadays. But, um, yeah, I mean, we have a core group of people that have been with us since the beginning. Wow. I think it's, it's uh, you know, something that's we're a source of pride for us is that these people love working for us. And I, I had that in my company, you know, we, we take care of them, we celebrate their birthdays. We, you know, I just did a whole rotation thing where they're, they're working nine months a year, three months off. Right. And uh, it's a hard job because you're out there, especially when we're treasure hunting, you're doing your own job and you're treasure hunting. Right. I put a lot of pressure on them. They're working 17, 18 hour days sometimes. Right. But, you know, they get rewarded for that. Yeah. And, uh, but we just adore our crew and it, you know, I just can't imagine any other way. I yeah. just can't. Good, good. You know. Um, John, uh, the, what, what has been the, I guess the next question really, so there's all the kind of overview and good stuff, but 
I need your crazy crew story. What, 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 give me an instance of when the crew situation kind of drives you crazy. Well, I mean, the first time when I first bought a boat, um, I was sitting there and I'm watching a crew wheel down these trolleys full of bottle water. And I said to the crew, I says, what, what, what are we doing with all this water? And the captain says, you don't expect me to drink sink water. I said, I grew up on sink water my whole life. <laughs> so, and you know, then they got these big bottles and they drink half the bottle of water. Not that I'm cheap, but it bothers me. Well, especially when you're paying the bills. Seven, oh, man. Think about it, if you have 15 crew, that's 45 meals a day. Yeah. Yeah. Think about how much toilet paper you gotta buy. Yeah. A lot of toilet paper. <laughs> so, but uh, no, no, my my daughter's <laughs> boyfriend leaves the half empty thing. On the, it drives me crazy. Yeah, I can't imagine what it's like. But, but it, I listen. It's nice to have the crew when you have the people coming on. Like if we have a lot of guests on board, yeah. you need a lot of crew, and you got to rotate them. And I mean, the, when I first bought this boat, they had twenty one crew on. And every time another person would, I says, "Who are you? Where, where did you come from?" <laughs> Oh, I'm in laundry, or I'm in pressing, or I'm in what? <laughs> but you know, yeah. after a while, you part get of, used to yeah, it. Yeah, part of a big boat. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, Brian. Any anything? Oh, that... I have no comment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Carl, crazy cruise story. Oh, God. Yeah, there's too many of those. <laughs> I don't know, but. They're, okay, yeah, I won't put you on They the take spot. good, we're only as good as them. They, you know, they take yeah, great care of yeah. us. Yeah, so, you know. No, I, ju I just posted something on, uh, on Instagram the other day where uh, I think we were in the Bahamas and, and we had 11 crew on the boat. And, you know, again, I like getting everybody involved. And I said, okay, everybody can have uh, tomorrow off, but all 11 have to jump from the third deck to the water. So uh, we caught the picture as, uh, unfortunately, nine of them jumped, the other two didn't, so they didn't get the day off. <laughs> so that created some animosity between the crew, but, uh, but it was a great picture. Yeah. <laughs> Getting ready to go. Yeah. Okay, what's next? So, you know, we're, it's, it's kind of the anniversary, right, of the world shutting down and now getting started again and again. Uh, you know, everything from, hey, we really need to shut down to opening back up. What, what are your hopes and dreams with what's next for your little fleet and what's happening? Well, I'm you thinking of building a new boat. All right. And um, trying to find someone that could build me one in 28 months. Wow. Um, you know, I like to be tortured and I like to torture people. <laughs> so building a boat, um, you know, I'm involved. I'm very involved. So, like, yeah. when we build a boat in Europe, I'll fly there, like, eight, nine times a year, maybe sometimes more. Right. And, you know, the problem is I always have a project manager, and then when they're building a boat, and I get there, and I say, why would you put this pipe so low? Why why'd you do, you know? So you try and spend more time doing it, but um, listen, would I, I would love to build a boat in the United States the long as we could get what we want. Right. Um, uh, the thing is, I enjoy building boats, yeah. and I love them. And I lo like we're going to build a, f a, a new boat, and you know I'm going to build a fast boat. Not going to be as fast as my other boats. Okay. But so far, no one has ever went faster than my fast boat. So when Wait, somebody which beat, one? well, Octopussy was probably okay. the fastest. Okay. And then we built a boat called Moonraker, which was really fast. Okay. And uh, then oh. World is Not Enough, right. which we were never able to. You know, we built that boat to do 70 knots. And the most we got it to 68 knots. Oh. And the boat would spin out vital like a, like a wave runner. And I remember we had the movie cameras and the people on it. And we were doing 67 knots. And I says, my captain's name was Zach. I says, Zach, we got to do, do 70 knots. We got to try and hit this. And we turned the power up. And all of a sudden, he says, boss, I'm losing it. I says, don't lose it now. And he says, I'm losing I says, Zach, don't lose it. And he says, I got no control, and I started screaming, hold on! And that boat spun out vital. Oh. And uh, so I never really accomplished the uh, 70 knots. Wow. And that was with only 78% um, power. Wow. Oh, so it just couldn't handle the speed. Well, it would become unstable. It would, ju it would just what's it that? It was that the water jets would lose propulsion. Oh, okay. And so then the boat, you know, the water jets are wide, so one 
jet would push harder than the other. Oh, we finally man. found that out after I sold it. Wow. <laughs> wow, wow. But we're going to build a new boat. It's going to have propellers. And uh, I'm excited to get started. Oh. I just got to zero in on what yacht I'm going to build it yeah. in. Very good. Brian, what are you looking forward to here? I, you know, obviously, oh, get, uh, boat getting done. And, getting the boat in the water. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. What's, the, what's the first adventure? Uh, first big adventure would be to go to Curacao to pick up the submarine. Right. Yeah. All right. And why, why Curacao to pick up a submarine? That's where they, they're built in the Netherlands, so they, okay. take them, they deliver them in Curacao. You got to go pick it up there. Very good. Very cool. Is that you boat? Yeah, you both. You both. And Carl, you, you have a submarine, right? We do. We have a Triton 3600 that right. uh, we keep on the axis. That's, that's a blast. And, and we're just trying to get walkers open this year. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We First time you'll ever be able to get super yachts in there. We'll have about eight slots for boats up to, you, John, you're not coming. <laughs> uh, so we'll come with this what is the, what's the, what's the draft? That'll yeah, be? we're going to be 14 clear low tide, so, oh, wow. you know. And, okay. and, and Lank, we've got a big turning base. It's the first time walkers will be protected all the way around. All right. And so we got a big 360 there. So right. uh, we'll let people come see the docks probably in June and then hopefully a, some kind of opening next uh, spring. My, my goal is to put my boat on John's boat. <laughs> <laughs> you got to pay for the fuel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, no, so, I think I think one of the funniest stories is Tom Convoy came to, to visit me up in Muskoka, and I had Miss Canada Three, which was the first Canadian boat to break the world speed record in 1939. Wow! And Tom and what I. What was the speed? Uh, it was 139 miles an hour. Uh, a hydroplane or? Uh, it was the first boat that had built a step in the bottom to get okay. it out of the water. Yeah. So Tom and I were whipping across the lake, I think at about 80, 85 miles an hour. And, and it was the first time that you've really seen Tom with a facelift. Where everything, <laughs> everything went back and uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. Very cool. Very cool. Well, um, kind of uh, just any closing thoughts and we'll open it up. We have a couple people. questions from yeah. the online audience. We'll, we'll, so. we'll, we'll let people ask some questions, but just in your overview, you know, in this conversation. Anything come to mind uh, that you'd want to share just, to, just to an audience of people that really serve you guys? And well, thank you, first of all, because it's, it's an amazing experience being a yacht owner and, and the people that help make it all happen. And uh, looking forward to a fabulous summer. All right. Thanks, yeah. Carl? Yeah, I mean, just the support we get, you know, this table right here, I can't say enough about everybody. And, you know, we can't, we can't do what we do without support. It's, I really appreciate that. It's an honor to be here today. Oh, thanks. Brian, what do you think? Yeah, building a boat here has been a fabulous experience. Zach is here today, who's on your board, was a great supplier. Rick Thomas, uh, lots of folks in your industry have been wonderful to work with. Some not so wonderful, but most of them yeah. have been really, really yeah. great. Yeah, okay. And John? Well, you know, I love building boats, so yeah. <laughs> there's no... Uh, the thing I would like to see keep changing in our industry, I'd love to be able to put any flag that I want. Like if I want to fly an American flag, yeah. I would love to be able to fly an American flag. Yeah. The problem is you can't fly an American flag with foreign crew. Right. So that's a little bit of an issue. And I know they moved the tonnage down. But to me, I believe that it would be nice you know, as an American. Like he only buys American. I understand that to be able to fly an American flag. And not that I'm not good with the other flags. I am good right. with the other flags. But I just think, why couldn't I have an American flag on my boat when I'm American? Yeah. And that sort of yeah. drives me crazy that yeah. we would never been able to get that to the next level right. where you know they, they got this fine line of 500 gross tons. Right. And I believe that they should sort of raise that up yeah. to a, a, a decent, now I'm not saying 4 million gross tons, but right. I think that's a big factor here and would help in our, um, in our industry to really move this boat business a little more forward yeah. to be able to build a big boat here and yeah. be able to put an American flag on it. Yeah, very good. Well, I'm really thankful. Why don't we uh, open it up to some questions? So, sure, I have a couple here. Well, and well, before, uh, I have a couple from online, and then I'll be walking around with a microphone, so if anybody has a question. Uh, but... Uh, Mr. Salupi, you're welcome to take the water when you leave today, so uh, it's to do that. I don't have to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> this is expensive yeah, water, right. buddy. So that's some fancy water, too. Yeah, some more buck water. Fuji. 
So Monique out in uh, <laughs> the Pacific Northwest, I think. What land? What land of cousins? No. Where do you like to go cruising? Okay, cruising. <laughs> in the I can't... U.S. Oh, in the U.S. Yes, yeah, thank you. In the U.S. Where do you like to cruise in the U.S.? Oh, I like going up to the Northeast. Yeah. I like going to Martha's Vineyard, Nantucket. Uh, we go out towards Montauk. My, there's a place, Block Island. We'll go to Newport. Yeah. Um, we're in that. We stay in that area. We went up to Maine once or twice. The, yeah. The problem is with the tide in Maine. You Ooh. know. You, yeah. you pull into a dock, and then you're going to get off the boat. I need a helicopter. To get off. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I mean, we have some beautiful places. Yeah. My favorite probably is the, and that's not in the U.S., but it's in the Bahamas. I enjoy going to the Bahamas. Yeah. Right? Yeah, same. Anywhere on the East Coast is fabulous. Bahamas is spectacular. Have yeah. you cruised the West Coast at all? Never, never been, yeah. no. Carl? In the U.S., yeah. uh, I'm more Texans. We love the Houston Ship Channel. Uh, that's nice. uh, Very and, uh, There's a plug. Yeah. <laughs> Corpus Christi. I mean, yeah. Okay, Bobby. Uh, well, much like John, I mean, you know, the Northeast is great. I'm yeah. Vancouver, Canada. Uh, yeah. Desolation Sound, that whole area of the world, yes. and uh, living in the Bahamas. There's, there's just nothing better than the Exumas. All right. And Walkers. All right. Anyone from the audience will kind of shift things around. Yeah, go ahead. Come in here. Yep, microphone comment. If you could introduce yourself before you ask your question, that'd be great for our online. There we go. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is uh, Jan Van Ochwa with uh, the Diamond Shipyard Group, Amel Superguards. Yes. Thank you for all being here. It's fascinating to listen to all of you. I have a question very specifically for Mr. Salubi. Of course I have that. If you can push the 28 to 36, would you be willing to do it? We have a 74 meter for you. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Everybody gets a commission if this goes through. It, that's a simple answer. Um, the reason I say 28, because it always winds up being late. So, not Amos? No. Wooden heads, wooden shoes, wooden listen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only kidding. <laughs> All right. Um, I'd like to add to that, though. Uh, Amos is not currently a member of the U.S. Super Yacht Association. We have a great opportunity for you to engage in the United States. And, uh, we'll fix that now. <laughs> I heard him. Okay, so this one got caught off a little bit, but I think you've answered it. I'm curious if buying uh, American is important to you or comes into play when you make decisions related to your yachts. So I think you and Brian have answered that well. Uh, Carl, you kind of just, and Bobby, you're kind of. You well, I, I, you know, I now understand the importance of parts and yeah. having a Westport type boat where you can make a phone call and it's there the, the day after. Yeah. There's really something to be said about that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, back to the audience. Joe. Thank you, Michael. Uh, my name is Joe Dargavage, and uh, I own the War Baby Sword Marine in Marble Island. And I just want to thank it's a formal statement because you all, everybody's talking about the Bahamas. I'm also the Vice President of the Association of Bahamas Marinas, but I want to thank everybody because we, we really look at the Bahamas as you know the cruising ground uh, to, to especially South Florida and the United States. And so I want to thank all of you who do bring the yachts to the Bahamas. Carl, I think you doing Walker's Cake. It's a, it's a true benefit to not only Florida what we do with Bahamas. So uh, keep coming over and, uh, and, and thank you for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. Someone else in the audience? Hang on one second. Jeff? We're coming. Yeah, the, there you go. My name is Austin Burkett. Uh, I'm with EJ Schrader Mattress Company, so it's funny you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Here. A little closer to your mic. Yeah. Uh, with the Marine Industry Association, Palm Beach County, we appreciate you having you guys here. Uh, question I kind of wanted to ask you guys: We, when I say we, I mean more of like the blue collar workers of the association, making mattresses or the guys making sheets or silk, you know, 
fitting the yachts with everything they need. How closely connected are you guys with those purchases? Do you, everything that comes through, do you guys see? Or is that all your captains or Stu or the purser or somebody like that? Okay. Uh, to be honest, I just know I want the best. Other than that, the, uh, the captain usually handles all of that for you me. You delegate, yeah. 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 Carl? Oh, she's sitting right over here. <laughs> yeah. Quality control. No, I'm like George Steinbrenner. I just signed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same for me, but John, you know, John, they do make mattress pads. You don't have to change the whole mattress. Yeah, it's easy to change the mattress. <laughs> what if it's some scoop? Okay. <laughs> All right, and uh, John. So Buy, buying, buying the yachts, and my captains have a lot of input in it. Right. So when we're building a yacht or buying a yacht, we look at the layouts, we look at all that stuff. And, and then uh, all the stuff inside. Well, I'm, I'm very, this is a funny story, but, you know, if you have a boat and it don't run, if the air condition works, the toilets work, and the shower works, you're okay. But when you have a boat and the toilets don't work or the shower don't work. You got a problem. That's a shitty problem. Yeah. <laughs> so... When I buy a boat, especially if it's a used boat, I, I'll put a deposit on it and I'll say to people, I got to take a shower. I want to stay on a boat overnight. And they think I'm crazy. I says, if I don't buy the boat, I'll pay X amount of dollars as if I chartered it. And I do that because some boats don't have the right water pressure. And, you know, you get no thing and the water just drips on you. So my captain's very involved. And I'll bring the crew on and I'll let them stay in the, some of the rooms. And, you know, I'll, I'll pay a little extra for it to be yeah. able to. See that because once you get the boat and these things don't work, and when a guy does a survey, most surveys, they, some guys are really efficient, but some survey guys will just go in, okay, the water works, you know, it's, it's warm. Right. Uh, so all them things are very important. To right. Me. No, the, the try it and buy it is, uh, yeah. 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 And, and it makes the experience better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let me go to the next one here written. How much does buying American or doing business in the U.S. compare to doing business in other countries. So how much does, I'm not sure if that's like a percent, how much does buying American or doing business in the US compare to doing business in other countries? I, I guess they're maybe asking for a split of what you buy American and what you don't. I mean, Bobby, I think- This goes have, back to the refit. If, yeah, we're, if we're here, yeah. we buy all American, and, and if we're not, we, we yeah. shop for the best price where we are and we yeah. get it done. Yeah, I mean, in a way, the, the question that's posed is this percentage split, and I, you know, I, I think we've got a bunch of uh, people here that love America and try to do, but it's hard to say, uh, you might know better, mm -hmm. you know, what percentage is foreign, what percentage is U.S., it's uh, kind of a tough one to answer. No, it's not, because when we build a boat, certain things will buy in the U.S., no matter what. Oh, For okay. instance, yeah, yeah. TV and yeah. appliances. yeah. Because, you know, if TV breaks and it's from European and it's a 240 volts, some uh, companies make uh, 115, 240. Some companies don't. Right. So we'll buy the TVs in America. TV yeah. breaks, you don't fix TVs. No more. You throw it overboard. What are you going to do with it? Right. So, um, and the same thing goes with, appl with appliances. You know, if, you know, like the, my, my chef's German and um, he's real meticulous. Got to have a certain coffee pot, a certain this. I said, Dita, can we buy an American coffee pot? If the coffee pot, now I can't get coffee. So, you know, we'll always make sure we have... A couple of those. A, you know, we'll have a foreign coffee pot and then oh, American. Okay. An American. So we'll have a little of each so we yeah. can, we can yeah. use it. Okay. Um, okay, yeah, that was the favorite spot. So, yes, go ahead. Hi, my name is Fran Flynn. And I would like to ask each of you, when you're building a boat, what is your top priority in um, building the boat and your top priority in choosing the manufacturer of who's going to build your boat? Okay, well, I'm going to kind of, John just said he's trying to build a boat that's got to go very fast and, uh, and, and some certain things. So, so uh, I think the biggest is, you know, knowing what you're building trying to have a um, complete layout with everything that you want in it, what your needs are. You know, some people like, I like a his and her bathroom. Some people build a boat, they don't have a his and her bathroom. I think that's very important. Um, 
what I do do is where we when we build a boat, wherever it is, we use the boat in that area just to do warranty work and make sure everything is right on the boat to make sure that right. it's easier to get the work done there than whatever is necessary to do. But um, the, I'm a little different. I'm so involved from start to finish, whether it's plumbing, whether it's fairing, engines, mechanical. I mean, that, that's really my thing, what I like to do. And um, we're... My wife is involved in dishes. She wants to know where she's putting her dishes. I said, Jenna, put paper dishes. The people are lucky we're writing them on the boat. And she's got like 5,000 sets of paper napkin holders and, and dishes. And I, I, I run out of room for dishes. You can't put your clothes on because she's got dishes there. But for myself, you know, I'm, I'm all about the technical yeah. stuff and... So in selecting a yard, you kind of use that as a criteria. Are, are they going to make me happy with their technical capabilities and the criteria of the yacht? Right. Or they, when I go and put input in it, or when I leave, they are they going to do the input? Yeah. So that's an important one for Does me. Does that answer your question for John? Yeah? Okay. Brian? Uh, prior experience with the vendor um, right. is probably really important. If you've had a good one, obviously you're going to go back. Right. Looking at all those systems from the perspective of maintenance, you know, I, one of the things on a boat um, is I hate to be feel like I'm a hostage to somebody else that has, you know, some proprietary equipment or something like that. And I, I just absolutely, that, that, that is not something I like. I want to be in control of my, you know, if I'm out in the middle of somewhere, I want to be able to fix it myself or have the parts to fix it myself and know how to fix it myself. Um, because you can't always get on a phone and call somebody. Right. You can't, in the Bahamas, you know, you can't find somebody to fix anything. you got to do it yourself. Yeah, but that's an interesting point because certain things, a water pump, a uh, toilet, you know, you probably, but now an engine with all the electronic controls, if it gives alarm codes, you know, you kind of, you're, we talk, you, you, you're you, are, you are a hostage yeah, to, to all this electronic yeah. stuff. There's just no question about so that. I, I think maybe it'd so, be fair to say you're doing the best you can to not be hostage to high tech. Got to go and have someone service it. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, there's no way you're going to escape it completely. Yeah. You yeah. know way. Yeah. Carl, um, I'm kind of glad John brought this up. I was on the boat nine months last year, and I don't think I saw the same napkin holder more than. <laughs> And somewhere in the bowels of our yacht, there is <laughs> napkin holders that we just haul around. I don't, the, to put a, if you were to put a fuel charge to that, John, I don't know if you've thought about that. But, uh, yeah. Very important. Yeah, yeah. I, I, can't, I can't be more the opposite. Like I, The only thing I have learned from owning a super yacht, cruise quarters. You mm -hmm. got to dial it up. You got to make it as comfortable, yeah. as fabulous for yeah. them there. Yeah. I, I don't even know what kind of engines I have in my boat. Right. I have right. <laughs> right. Yeah. I just want to know they start it, it goes, and here we go. Right. Other than that, I, I don't want to know anything else right. other than cocktails John, are ready. John, wants to buy a boat. <laughs> <laughs> With good cruise quarters. So I have a question for you. Each of you guys are uh, really... Uh, independent in a way, John. Uh, with uh, taking care of the boat, and you talked about peril. You take, you manage your own boats. Is that? Yes, we we manage our own boat. Yeah. Through through. We, we have a whatever. special girl okay. in the office that manages the boat, and the but my crew, my captains, really are the ones that's managing it, and then yeah. my girls yeah. look at it, and then uh, my wife, she oversees when the bills come. I never even see the bills. Right. She sees the bills because I would get sick. Yeah. I probably wouldn't even own the boat. I'd probably have a rowboat right. if I seen the bills. But so she sees that, you know, yeah. you know, I have no idea how much we spend on food and and right. I have no clue. Right. You don't want to know, Joe. Yeah. I know. And, and you have someone looking after. It. Yeah. Um, and uh, Brian, you're gonna kind of do that. You're gonna you've done it yourself, and now you're gonna bring in a couple people and figure it out. I guess you know. Um, so you're gonna be self managed, Carl. You guys, you, you do it. Anyways. I hired the biggest asshole that I could find, and he <laughs> runs everything. Okay. Yeah, these guys know him, Craig. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But so with, I can be the nice guy. Just yeah. Oh, you're, you're right, because it makes things easier. Yes. Yeah. And that way, the guy who runs it, yeah. if something goes wrong, he hires the people. Right. You know, I get attached to a person, and when my captain says, we're going to let that person go, what do you mean you're going to let the person go? Yeah. 
with, you know, if, if, I, if I wasn't hands-on with it and I probably had a crew management team, it would probably be a lot different. But when it comes to charters and all that stuff, we have someone right. running that. Sure. We, don't, we sure. don't get involved in that. And Bobby? We, we have done it internally, but yeah. it's just as in the last 30 days, we, we've gone back to Burgess to manage okay. everything. I just, yeah. I just don't want to yeah. deal with it anymore. Yeah, understood, understood. Thank you very much. Any more? Where, where are we We're at? actually 15 minutes over. Oh, so so uh, we, I, will, we, will we want to be, be cognizant I, of everyone's time. Yeah. We, could, we could talk for, for hours yeah. and with such a fantastic panel. Let's please give a big round of applause yeah. for you. Yeah. So, yeah. Our sincere thanks. You guys, really, uh, to, to have this kind of feedback is super valuable. Thank you, everyone, to put it on USSA. Yes, thank you. And you want to... Well, yes, we're gonna yeah, we're gonna just wrap here for a second. It's so great to have everybody here together today. It's uh, we look forward to this year where we're COVID's going away. We will be at Mets, we will be at Flibs, and of course, if you live here in South Florida, the 50th annual Winterfest Boat Parade uh, is is a, is gonna be happening, and uh, and we so welcome you to the very unprecedented hybrid event that has owners and industry all working together. But we couldn't do it without all of you. And uh, we encourage all of you guys to stay engaged with us as an industry. And because together, we are way more powerful than we are individually. And uh, we have opportunities for committees, et cetera. And you know, tell your colleagues. And because individually, we're strong. But together, we're a massive, powerful force. So on behalf of our board and our industry, our committee, uh, the chairman of the summit committee, Diane Byrne. I'd like to thank this panel of esteemed owners. Of course, our moderator, Michael Reardon, who was the first captain I met my very first day in the Caribbean on my first yacht as a, as a chef in, my, in the Caribbean. So it's nice to have uh, folks around. And uh, all, all the sponsors and everyone who has made today possible, all of you in attendance, all of you that are online joining us from wherever you are, but we have to give a big round of applause to Lee Savage Woo! from Between Two Reds. <laughs> we today have it despite the crazy glitches. And of course, our photographers, Tom Serio from Tom Serio Photography. And the inimitable Billy Black. I saw him around earlier. Um, this event has been recorded and it will be available on the U.S. Super Yacht Association website, of course, powered by Yachtco. And the program that you have on your tables for those of you that are here in person is also currently on our website, so you can share that with your friends and colleagues. And uh, we hope you guys have a fantastic show. We wish the MIA Palm Beach to have a great, great event. I hope that you get to sell some of your boats, uh, Mr. Salupi. And thank you all so very much. Stay well, stay safe, and stay engaged. We love you guys. Thank you so very much.